Good morning, and what a wonderful Sunday morning, May the 3rd. It is our 7th, uh, which is hard to just imagine, uh, our 7th ministry uh, through our uh, internet uh, streaming provider. And uh, we, we want to welcome you and thank you so much for joining us today, uh, joining us for uh, uh, Pastor Mary's Bible study in Zephaniah, and then uh, as our worship minister, Tammy Crawford, led us in, in worship this morning. What a great time. And uh, now I want to bring you a message that the Lord has laid on my heart for today. Uh, you know, here we are almost two months into this COVID-19 uh, circumstance. And as I mentioned to uh, those on my uh, text stream uh, this evening, uh, yesterday evening, uh, we are keeping a constant look uh, at the uh, governor of Colorado's uh, edicts, his uh, uh, guidelines, not guidelines, they're actually uh, laws. Um, and uh, so, um, we are keeping an eye on that, and we are looking to return to our worship in our building as quickly as possible, uh, while keeping uh, in mind the safety uh, of our congregation. And so, uh, here we are in week 10, and uh, I want to bring to you a word uh, from the Bible out of the book of Psalms. Uh, in Psalm number 139, I want to read verses 1 through 18, and it says this, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee, bind them about thy neck, and write them upon the table of thine heart. So thou shalt find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes, fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel, and marrow to thy bones. Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with thy fruit, first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than of fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things that thou canst desire are not compared unto her. Length of days, in her right hand and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. I'm going to start this all over again. Good morning, and uh, welcome to May the 3rd, 2020, uh, the seventh week of our uh, ministry by internet and uh, our streaming ministry through our website. And then, of course, you'll be able to watch these videos again uh, on our Facebook page and uh, also on our uh, YouTube channel. And uh, you can find the uh, uh, the Wix website, uh, which is Peak View's website. It's P-E-A-K-V-I-E-W-C-O-G dot W-I-X-S-I-T-E dot com forward slash P-E-A-K-V-I-E-W-C-O-G. And uh, that is our church's website. And... Uh, go to the live stream page and uh, you'll be able to click on live services and uh, 
uh, each Sunday morning until we're able to meet again in our building at 9.45 a.m. We will begin with our Bible study with uh, Pastor Mary Detch, and then uh, we will also be uh, having that followed by worship with our worship ministry Tam, uh, minister, Tammy Crawford, and then I'll be bringing a message, and of course, I'm Pastor Rex uh, with Peak View Church of God. What an incredible time we are living in, very difficult, and uh, just want to bring a message with you today uh, that the Lord has laid on my heart, um, and I want to bring it from Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to read verses 21 through 26, and it says this, my son, keep sound wisdom and discretion, so they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of sudden terror, nor of trouble from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would add your blessing to your word. Pray that you would open our hearts, our eyes, our minds, our ears. God, I pray that you would help us to hear and understand what it is that you have for us today, that we would serve you and lift you up and in confidence follow you every day of our life, that we may have sound sleep in our midst, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to use verses 21 and 24 from what I just read to you. And it says, my son, keep sound wisdom and discretion. Verse 24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. What I want to speak to you about this morning is what I have titled a good night's sleep. You know, here we are in the midst of this coronavirus, COVID-19. Well, you know, is it a Chinese plot? Is it a random mistake? Regardless of the cause, I want us to understand that God was not caught off guard. Many find themselves today feeling trapped, unable to get out, go about as they wish to in their daily lives. And some children are even told you can't hug your grandparents. And, and it's a very difficult time for all of us. We uh, are traveling around when we have to go out to grocery stores and we're encouraged to wear masks and and to wear gloves where we can. And, and uh, even in our household, there are those of our family who are, uh, who are and have provided uh, masks for us. And uh, uh, so we wear them when we go out. And uh, we're living in a brand new day. Um, uh, we're living in a time where it would be very easy to be, um, become super uncomfortable, uh, very um, not confident in our future and in the truth and, and, and in, in God, who we may be seeking and, and trying to find some meaning in this. You know, like I said just a moment ago, God is not caught off guard. And schools and businesses being closed, that's a difficult thing. But I know that God is still in command. He is still on his throne, and we can still put our full confidence in him. And there are psychological impacts that are taking place in our lives, and we are being psychologically impacted by, uh, by the things that are going on around us. But we are driven not by the worries of our conscience. And I spoke to you about that at the very beginning of this uh, eight weeks ago about fear versus faith. And now I want to speak to you for just a moment about how that God can give you a good night's sleep. We, we talk about proper sleep. 
Well, the Bible deals with many things that uh, uh, many times we overlook them because they're they're day to day things. They're they're natural things. They they come to us, and and during this very difficult time, we are finding that some things that we took for granted, we now can no longer take for granted. Uh, when we conduct ourselves in the typical Western Christian life, you know the the Christianity of the Western world, uh, we many times focused on how many we could gather into our buildings, and and we focused on how uh, how good our our worship uh, was conducted. And and don't get me wrong, we should study for our sermons, we should practice for our worship. We should do our very best to serve the Lord with the best ministry that we possibly can. But I think something is happening in the church that is causing our focus to go to places that it has not gone in a very, very long time. And this is good in many ways. But I want you to understand that Bible has a lot to say about getting a good night's sleep. Now, what is proper sleep? Uh, scientists, uh, doctors, physicians, uh, they tell us that we each need to get a good night's sleep, and we're told that proper sleep uh, and proper sleep habits will contribute uh, to us living and having a healthier life. You know, when we think about proper sleep, not only can proper sleep help us to have a healthier life physically? But when we look at what the Bible says about getting a good night's sleep, we will find that it helps us to have a spiritual life that is healthier and better. And we can trust in the one true God who is going to take us through. God deals with proper sleep habits. So what is good sleep versus wrongful sleep? according to the Bible. Well, if we look at the Bible, we will find that uh, Scripture tells us that uh, there is a wrong sleep. There is a wrongful sleep. And this not only applies to our spiritual lives, but it applies to our, our, our physical lives, but it applies to our spiritual lives. Our physical lives, we have wrongful sleep that can happen in that too. In fact, the Bible tells us in Psalm number 139, and I'm going to read all uh, verses 1 through 11, and it says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thine hand with a stranger, and I'm sorry, this is actually Proverbs chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. It says, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast stricken thine hand with a stranger, thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, thou art taken with the words of thy mouth, do this now my son, and deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go and humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. What scripture is saying here is it's, it's warning us against uh, sleeping at the wrong times. When we have done a friend wrong and we have instead uh, making a, 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 an agreement with a stranger and we've done our friend wrong, the Bible tells us that we shouldn't take any sleep, we shouldn't take any slumber, but go and fix it now. The Bible also says to us that if we go to an altar in prayer and we are convicted at that altar of prayer, and, and first of all, we have to understand Prayer is something we need to be doing on a regular basis. And the Bible says that if we go and we go to this altar of prayer and we find ourselves convicted of God, that we've wronged our neighbor, that we've wronged someone, that we have ought against our brother or our brother has ought against us, that we need to leave our gift at the altar and get up in haste and go and make it right with that person. You and I need to understand this. This is this is God speaking to us. We need to be able to, at the right times, not take rest. We need to go and do things before we rest. We need to go up right then, right there, and take care of business. And then it goes on to say in Proverbs chapter 6, go to the ant, thou sluggard, 
Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou rise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come upon thee as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. What God is saying is that we need not be lazy. We do not need to be someone who just uh, realizes, you know, hey, we're, you know, I can't do anything anyway. I might as well just lay here and, and watch TV and, and do whatever. I might as well just go do my thing and not worry about what uh, uh, important things might be out there. The Bible says that we can have improper or wrongful sleep. And it says not to be lazy, not to be slothful, but instead to be diligent in what we are doing. And when we do that, we find that we will be diligent in doing the right things and going out. And, and the Bible even talks about working for a living. It says, first of all, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 4, and then verse 4, 13, it says, The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. It says the sluggard is, is going to say, oh, it's too cold, or it's too this, or it's too that, or it's too difficult. I don't uh, enjoy this. this. This is not as much fun. I mean, I, 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 this is probably the most intensive time in my ministry, and I, I'm trying to think of another time which is more intensive I, uh, as far as consistent and, and having to make decisions and having to deal with, with the circumstances that we're in. It is a very difficult time, and there are some who might say, well, we're just not going to have church. We're not going to do anything. We're just, we're just going to have to wait this out, and we'll get back together, but I'm here to tell you it's time for the church to rec recognize God has given us tools. God has has given us the ability not to be slothful, not to be sleepy, not to be lazy in our ministry, but instead this is an opportunity to reach out and touch lives of those that we haven't been able to touch before. God is saying, don't, don't involve in wrongful sleep. Don't be lazy. Don't be slothful. Uh, when it's time to, to plant, when it's time to, to plow, when it's time to go out there, it might be a little cold, as the Bible said here in Proverbs uh, chapter 20. But it, it might be difficult, but it's time instead to rise up and be the person, the people that God has called us to be. And I believe God is calling the church to do that right now. It says in verse 13, love not sleep, lest thou come to poverty. Open thine eyes, and thou shalt be satisfied with bread. In Psalm number 132, verses 4 and 5, it says, I will not give sleep to mine eyes or slumber to my eyelids. This is what the psalmist is saying. Until I find a place for the Lord, a habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. You see, I believe it is time for the church to recognize that during this time that we we may want to just curl up in a ball and and, and may want to just huddle uh, together and say, I, I just don't, this doesn't feel comfortable. Uh, it is time instead for us to build our relationship with Almighty God like we have never done before. I believe this is one of the signs of us living in the end days. We are living in the end times. And I know a lot of people say, well, you're trying to scare us, Pastor. No, I am telling you, this is the beginning of the end. This is the beginnings of of what in the Bible says when we see some of these things begin to come to pass, then those who believe in God are to look up and lift up our heads for our redemption draweth nigh. I believe it is time for the church to get to work and to do it with the best of our ability. In Psalm number 127, the entire chapter is only five verses, so I'm going to read it to you. It says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman worketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, and to eat the bread of sorrows, for he giveth his beloved sleep. Now, when we talk about this, it, it, we're talking about wrongful things. And I just told you that you need to be at it. You need to be effective. You need to be working the work of the Lord. And you do. 
but don't do it of your own ability. Don't do it of your own uh, desire. Don't do it out of your own heart, but do it for the Lord. The Bible says that it doesn't do any good to rise up early and to work into the late night to, in order to be able to build something up for yourselves. You know, the Bible says, it, it, Jesus tells the story about the rich man that, that had this great harvest and he said, I'm going to build barns and I'm just going to put everything away and I'm just going to say to my soul, eat, drink and be merry and, and uh, let me just rest. And uh, the Bible, Jesus himself said, you fool. You don't know that this very night your soul will be required of you. It is time for the child of God to recognize it is not a time to slumber and, and uh, it is not a time to do it of our own abilities and our own desires. It is time to seek the will and the face of God and to work the works of God the way he would want us to. And uh, it goes on. Psalm number 127 goes on and says, Lo, Children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows in the hand of a mighty man, so are children in the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them, so they shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies at the gate. Now, believe me, if you have children, and many of you know exactly what I am saying, you will rest well when you have the opportunity to lie down and sleep, especially when you have a quiver full of them. I am here to tell you that uh, children are a blessing of the Lord, and, and it is very difficult. You need to take the time to sit down and explain to them. And there are some, there are some great uh, instruments to be able to help teach children about worry, and uh, you can find them out on the internet. And uh, uh, it is a, a very great uh, place. I know that the uh, uh, the business that I work for uh, has a lesson on helping children understand uh, uh, how to deal with with anxiety during this very difficult time. And uh, if you'd like to know where that is, just give me a, a call or text me or contact me through the uh, church's website. I'll be glad to give that information to you. Uh, but we need to understand that it's not our own church that we're building. It's not our own ministry we're building. It is the work of the living God. Now, how are we going to get a good night's sleep? We've talked about what a bad night's sleep is or what a, a wrongful sleep is, but how are we going to get a good night's sleep? Well, one of the most wonderful stories and examples of God's rest for his people is found through Jesus as our prime example. And in Matthew chapter 8, uh, verse 18 and then 23 through 25, Jesus had just dealt with the centurion servant. He had dealt with Peter's sick mother-in-law. He had dealt with several sick and several of those possessed with devils. He was surrounded by a multitude that kept bringing him all kinds of ministry and kept pressing upon him. And finally, uh, we find in Matthew chapter 8, uh, verses 18 and 23 through 25, it says, Now when Jesus saw the great multitude about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. And they get in the ship. And when he was entered into the ship, verse 23, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the midst of the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, for we perish. And he says, Oh, you of little faith. Well, first of all, he gets up, walks to the front of the ship, says, peace, be still. And he takes care of it. But you see, the example here is that after involving in ministry, Jesus knew that no matter what came his way, he was okay. His father had him in his hands and he was asleep in the back of the boat. And even in the midst of the storm, he was getting a good night's sleep even though the disciples were freaking out. In Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 12, this verse is basically the opposite of go to the ant, you sluggard. It says, verse 12, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. And it goes back to the scripture that I just read to you about doing it of your own power and doing it for your own riches and for your own good and for your own good. Uh, uh, benefit and blessing uh, personally for yourself. 
It said, the sleep of a laboring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much. We need to do and give the best. And the Bible says that whatever we do, we do unto the Lord. And if you do it unto the Lord, no matter what you're doing, no matter what labor you are involved in, no matter what kind of, of work you're involved in, if you do it for the glory of God, then you will be able to rest well. In Psalm number four, verse eight, it says, I will both lay me down in peace and sleep for thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. We know that God is in command. Psalm number three, verse five, the Lord is our trust. I laid me down and slept. I awakened for the Lord had sustained me. And we can know that when we wake, when we go to sleep, that we are in his care. And when we wake, it is the Lord that has sustained us through the night. In Proverbs chapter three, verses 21 through 24, it says, my son, and I read this to you earlier, keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Uh, then thou shalt walk in the way safely and thy foot shall not stumble. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, when thou lie down and thy sleep shall be sweet. When we put our trust in the Lord, when we, when we seek God's wisdom and God's discretion, God's favor, the way that God would have us to live, we can know that when we lie down, we can sleep peacefully for God will bring us that rest. In Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus says, to his disciples and to all of us through this scripture, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come to the Lord today. Lay down all your burdens. Lay down all your cares. Lay down everything that you have that's pressing upon your heart and your mind. God will give you rest. He, he will give you a peace of heart that none other can give you. In Psalm number 23, and the 23rd Psalm is very... Uh, uh, very popular, very, very well known in the Christian faith. But I just want to read to you the first three verses. It said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. When we put our trust in the Lord, when he is our shepherd and he is the one that is leading us forward, we can find rest, abundant. We can find rest for our souls. We can get a good night's sleep. In Psalm number 121, uh, we know we can sleep well because the Lord never slumbers. He is never apart from us. Psalm 121, I will lift mine eyes up to the hills whence, from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. God is going to take care of you. Matthew chapter 9, uh, verses 18 through 22. Jesus tells uh those that said, don't, don't bother the master anymore, uh, because he had been approached and, and, uh, the gentleman said, my daughter is lying at home. She's, she's dying. Would you please come and, and pray with her? And, uh, uh, everyone said, oh, stop bothering him. She's already dead. And Jesus said, she's not dead. She's just asleep. And when he got to the, the home, uh, they were all wailing and mourning. They had the professional mourners there. And uh, uh, Jesus went in and said, what are you all wailing about? She's not dead. She's just sleeping. And they started laughing. They went immediately, flipped the switch from mourning to laughing. Well, let me tell you something. When we face death, it is like a restful sleep. And we can know that we are being taken care of. Now we know in this particular story that Jesus went in and he prayed for the girl and he raised her back to, to life and he presented her to her parents. But in Matthew chapter nine, uh, he said a certain ruler, and this is, this is what I just spoke to you about. My daughter's even now dead. 
In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, though, the death of a believer is referred to as sleep. And also in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. First Paul writing to the Corinthians said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all pass away. We shall not all die, but we shall all be changed. And he refers to it as a sleep in the Lord. And it says in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and verse 13, he says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and with the dead in Christ, they will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I want to bring this to a close this way. I want you to understand. You can go and have restful sleep tonight and every night when you put your trust in the Lord and know that he is going to take care of you. Some of you may have lost your jobs. You're wondering where the next paycheck is coming from. I can tell you, God has you in his hands. He is going to take care of you. You, you, there is a great anxiety that is building as we continue along this path. And it seems like this virus just doesn't want to seem to let up. But I am telling you, God is in control. He has you in his hands. If you will approach him and you will lay in his arms and you will lay your burdens in his hands, he will take them and he will care for you. He will give you a good and restful night's sleep in the physical and he will give you rest in your soul. He will give you rest in your mind. He will give you rest. He will give you a good night's sleep and he will help you through the days and weeks and months ahead. And he will keep you until the Bible says, I know who I'm believed in and I am persuaded he is able to keep what I have committed to him against that day. What is that day? The day that I pass from this earth, whether it be by death or rapture, I will be in his hands and he will take care of me for eternity. I have eternal life. I know that in him. And in the midst of this and any other storm that you face, you may know that regardless of the earthly outcome, when you trust in Christ, you may be certain of a good night's sleep. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these who are hearing this message. God, those who are watching at any time, and I pray, dear God, that you would touch their hearts and lives with your word. And I pray, dear God, that if there are any that are struggling with anything in their lives, anything that is, that is bringing anxiety upon them, I pray, dear God, that you would give them a restful heart, a restful night's sleep, God, both spiritually and mentally and physically. God, I pray that you would help us emotionally to be able to rest in you. And I pray, dear God, today that whatever needs are out there, whatever needs that are in their lives, God, that you would meet those needs. Your promises are true. God, we can be your people, knowing that every moment of our life is in your hands. So, God, I give this into your hands tonight. I praise you today. I praise you for all that you are doing right now. And I pray that as we continue to go through this day, that you would bless us and keep us in your care. May we ever walk in you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, my friend, if you don't know what it is to have that comfort, I want to encourage you, as I have done every week during this broadcast, that if you don't know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want you to take the steps to come to know him right now. And it's very simple. Confess that you are a sinner, that you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And if you will confess your sins, the Bible says he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess your sins. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. 
that he is your savior, that he died on the cross and that his blood is applied to for your sin. And if you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you can be saved. And when you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, and you confess your sins before God, then if you will give your life and, and just tell the Lord, here I am, use me. I will do my very best to live for you the rest of my life. When you do those things, he has promised that he will take your life, he will forgive you of your sin, and he will walk with you every day of your life. And if you need help, which you will, contact your local pastor. We encourage you, if you're in the Colorado Springs area, anywhere close, to contact our church. Contact this ministry team through our website by giving us a call, by uh, sending us a text or an email. We want to walk with you through this, and we want to help you to understand God has you in his hand. Now, my friend, may God go with you. May he bless and keep you. May he, with his love and his favor, shine his light upon you every day of your life. Until we meet again, until we worship together again, God bless you.